This past Friday, as I don't think is a secret to anybody, is typically known as Black Friday. It marks the beginning of the Christmas shopping season, or as more politically correct, you would say, the holiday shopping season. We'll stick with Christmas here in church, but anyhow, as you know, many, many, many times on Black Friday, it is one of the busiest shopping days of the year. People are running around, hustling and bustling. They want to be the first ones in line to get that new toy or that new electronic object for their kids, for themselves, for whomever. And I often try to avoid going out. This year I was unsuccessful in that venture I ended up being, but I was not one of those who were first out. Many people do go out as soon as they can, though, before it's even light outside. They get in their car, they pack it up, and they're there. They're first ones in line. They rush to the back of the store. They're even, in the years past, have killed people trying to get in the store, and they're in such a hurry. There's such a rush, and they have to get that toy. It's not always, though, a happy ending, of course, because sometimes they don't get there in time. The, parent, the children scream, the parents cry, and they leave the store displeased. Very few people take time to just sit down and relax. Sometimes they drag their families to the stores with them. Sometimes well, they just, they just got to be there in that rush. And some people really enjoy that rush. Sometimes we also want to do that with Christmas. That anticipation that builds with stores selling the new objects, the Christmas decorations everywhere, we have that same anticipation in the church. Here we are in Advent season, and we want to right away go into Christmas. Well, and who can blame you? Christmas songs are joyful. They talk about the coming of the Savior, that He's here, not just that He's coming, that He's arrived. These Advent songs, these Advent readings, they, oh, they're kind of somber. Did you notice that this morning? They're, they're slower. And the readings, you know, they remind us of the times that are yet to come. For the Christmas hymns, they're exciting and they're, they're joyful. And so, how can we not want to get right to Christmas? How can we not want to, have, with such anticipation, jump right into that Christmas season, skip right over Advent and celebrate December 24th and December 25th? As it's hard to wait. But let me encourage you for a moment to wait. Despite the anticipation of the stores this year, as soon as Reformation Day coming, already setting up their Christmas decorations, Halloween, and skipping right over Thanksgiving, as much as the anticipation grows there, as much as the anticipation grows with the store, with the shopping season that's arrived, let me encourage you to wait. To take a deep breath, to pause. To take a deep breath in this Advent season and consider what this season is about. And I don't believe I'm alone in this encouragement. In fact, if we go to our text Isaiah, from Isaiah chapter 2, our Old Testament reading for today, well, he never uses the word wait. You can look at it again, Isaiah 2. He never uses that word wait, but he does say there's a specific time that is coming. And that we have a time that we are waiting for. So as we sit and we wait, perhaps a question of why. Why should we wait? Because even as you read Isaiah's text there again, you see that it promises better days. Peace on the earth. That people will beat their weapons into farming implements. That people will come to God and worship. That there will be one mountain greater than the other. It's talking about going up to the Lord and praising Him. So how can we wait? How can we be patient in this time? Don't we want this day to come? Well, certainly, yes. We do want this day to come. We do, want, we do want to rush in. But again, I encourage you, wait. And immediately, the phrase that comes to my mind would be, good things come to those who wait. But I'd like to give you a little better reason than that. And perhaps one of the reasons that we should wait during this Advent season is because of the message that Jesus gave to the disciples. Just a little bit earlier than our text for today in Matthew 24, Jesus says in verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Here Jesus promises to the disciples that the whole world must hear the gospel message first. Before he comes again, the whole world must hear the good news. 
Part of the reason that Jesus is not coming yet is the whole world has not had the opportunity to hear the gospel. He makes that promise that all people will hear the gospel before he comes again. Until that time, he's giving people opportunities to hear of his love. He's giving them opportunities to, know, to come to know him, to receive the Holy Spirit, to be forgiven. He's giving people opportunities to break free from this darkness and see the light. So wait. What would happen if we fast forwarded time? If we skipped right over Advent? If we skipped over the waiting? If we jumped right into Christmas? If we jumped right into the end? What would happen to those who have not hear, heard the Gospel? To those who have not been brought to the saving faith? To those who are not living in a loving relationship with God? What would happen to them? Well, as we heard earlier in Mark chapter 16, we know exactly what happens to them. In Mark 16, 16, whoever believes and baptized shall be saved. Whoever does not believe shall be condemned. Whoever does not believe shall be condemned. When Christ comes again, when Christ comes to this world the second time, when He comes to bring us home, it's not going to be a second chance anymore. There's not going to be a, a spot in there where people can say, oops, I didn't know you were a God. That's not going to happen. There's no such thing as anonymous Christians. There's only one way. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And only in that way can someone be saved. And if we fast forward time, if we refuse to wait, if we refuse to take time, and all those people, all those people perish without hearing the gospel message. That time we have, that time is available not just for, for, uh, for those people to hear, but for us to tell them about God's love, for us to share His gospel message. But I also think that God also gives us time for another reason. That God also encourages us to wait for our own sake. How many of us get caught up in the day-to-day -day life? How many of us get caught up in that rush? Whether or not we're shopping or whether or not we're at home. Those things we have to do, our family, our loved ones, we have to take care of them. Doctor's appointments, jobs, the various things that we are responsible for. How often do we get caught up in those things? Instead of keeping Christ first, Perhaps this season of Advent is also a time to reaffirm that relationship we have with God. Certainly we are saved not by our works, but by Christ alone. But when we refuse to, to rely on God, when we refuse to turn to God over and over again, where is our relationship with Him? At what value do we put that relationship with Him? At times when we grow busy, when we get in that rush, we find it hard to take time to pray. To take time to sit down with God, just talk to Him and hear His Word to us. It's hard to find time to read His Word, to see what His message is for our lives. It's even hard at times to be in church because things are so busy. Our lives are so consumed with things. And it's hard. It's hard to look at our lives and see how far we at times stray from God. To see how far we wander from Him. To see how much other things take that priority in our lives. It's hard to look at that, to examine ourselves and see that. But I think Advent is the perfect time to do so. Advent is that time where we do put, away, put aside our hymn of praise where we do take on that somber attitude. We put aside some of our hallelujahs because we, want to because we do take time to remember that without Christ, without His redemption for us on the cross, we would be hopeless. We would be living in a world that had no chance of salvation. We would be living in a world that stumbles through the darkness 
And while we have seen the light, while we have been brought into that fold of God, there are many people who still live in that darkness. Who still live in that separation from God. So maybe Christ's returning, maybe His, us waiting for His return can be seen as a good thing. In this Advent season, we do have time to remember that Christ did come the first time. That He did come into our world. That He came for each one of us to redeem us. That no matter how busy our lives got, no matter how separated from God we became, that He never was too busy for us. But that His love for us continues to abound. And I think beyond all other reasons, it's because it's not time yet. Isaiah said the days are coming, that last day. It's not yet time. Because God's plan is still working out. Because God is still working His plan in our lives. Paul reminds us in Romans chapter 5 of how perfect God's timing is. You see, at just the right time, when we were yet powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And insert your own name there. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for Jonathan. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for Terry, Ollie, Sarge, Barbara. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for Joe, for Sue, for Lindsay. Yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for Frank, for Anne Marie, for Susie. Put your name in there. That in just the right time, Christ entered into our world. At just the right time, Christ gave his life on the cross. And at just the right time, Christ will come again. So in this Advent season, I encourage you to wait. Be patient. Because God is yet to work out his plan. And as he does, it will be more wondrous, even than his first coming, when Christ comes again as Savior for all of us, to bring us home. It will be greater than His first coming. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, be with your hearts and minds, now and always. Amen. And let us pray. Christ Jesus, we thank You. We thank You that You care for us, You love us. That You have entered our world to forgive our sins, to redeem us condemned people. Lord, we thank You that Your love for us has never, it never dwindles, it never runs out, but that You constantly care for us. We pray that in this Advent season, we would find time to grow close to You, to know You, to, re, to, to live out our lives serving You. In Your precious and holy name we pray. Amen.